First, let's take a look at creating a new NetBeans project. Today we're going to look at creating graphical interfaces for our Java applications with NetBeans. And NetBeans is a free tool or compiler you can download from uh, Sun Microsystems or I guess Oracle. And uh, it's, it's open source, it's completely free, and in a lot of ways it's better than Visual Studio. If you Google you know, NetBeans, you'll find the latest version, download it, and install it. It's got a great interface building tool. Now, we can make JFrame and JApplet applications um, in Notepad if we wanted to. All right, we don't need anything special for that. But this tool can save you a lot of time because it's, it's a full IDE or integrated development environment. It has so many things. Not only does it do Java, it does C++, Ruby on Rails, HTML, all different kinds of, of languages and things. But I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to say New Project. And notice my choices here, PHP, C++, and you know, in this case I want Java. But, and you can choose Java Web. Just look at all the different templates, you know, project templates that you can choose from. But I'm just going to make a, a basic Java application. All right. So here I'm going to choose a project folder. And let's see, I have Deep Freeze on this partition. Uh, so I'm going to put it on a thawed partition over here. And um, I'll just create a folder called Temp there. And we'll call this, our project name will be Interface. So the purpose of this is to demonstrate an interface. Okay. All right, and this creates an empty project shell, sort of like a solution uh, that you'd create in, in you know, Visual Studio. All right, and um, it implements packaging, so you can create different packages. And you can think of a package sort of as um, you know, an area of scope where you can combine different classes and objects in Java all in the same package. And then you have to use the keyword import and import packages from one object to another uh, you know, in order to take objects from one class that's in one package and use them in a different package. So just using the import statement. All right, so notice that the wizard, I'll close this over here, it gives you a to-do list and everything. Um, over here is sort of the, you know, almost like the solution explorer option in Visual Studio, but this lets you kind of go through your different Java files and packages and select them libraries. This is great, too. It, um, you know, your functions will pop up whenever you select a class, and notice the main function popped up here inside the navigator view. Great tool. It has something uh, akin to IntelliSense. Um, in other words, if I wanted to, let's see, inside of main, if I do system out, you can see the pop-ups here. All these different thing, you know, items appear here in system out. So just, just some great tools and things, okay? And it's, it's great for console code, but it's what, you know, where it really stands out or where it really becomes an outstanding IDE uh, is when you start you know, building interfaces with it. So I'm going to go here, and you can right-click. Um, I can click on source packages or the project, and I could add a new class here in source packages. I could add a new class. And these will appear. You know, I've used the JFrame form. I've used the JApplet form. Um, but if you don't see it, what we want to do for, to use the graphical design tool is implement one of those forms. All right, so we want to add one of those. But I'll go through the list just in case you haven't used them before. They might not appear on the you know the root menu, so to speak. So just click on other and go and, and browse through and, and look at all of the different items here. So swing GUI forms. I can add a JApplet form for building a project, you know, an interface to work with a project um, that's embedded in a web page. And here's aut form for applet form and swing. You know, I can do the JApplet form. I can do a JFrame form. I have all of these different options here for building interfaces. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a JApplet form. And I'm just going to call this one. Let's see, I called that interface, we'll call this interface form, okay? And you can specify the package and whatnot, but, all right? When we do this, this pops up, and now we have access to this form, okay? And eventually what I want to do is come in here and build uh, and set the visible properties to true inside of main here. So I want to launch my interface from within main. But as it stands, you can compile the project and test it. If you right-click on the file and select Run, you can actually test your interfaces separately apart from the main function. Now that's kind of cool, just using the you know the, the built-in applet viewer. Um, the same thing with JFrames. So that's that's kind of cool. And you know uh, up here, if we're going to build the project, we just say build main project or rebuild, clean and build if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and build it. 
And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say run file because I haven't put any code in main yet to launch it. So you can see that it's just an empty, you know, empty applet uh, with you know a background. Next, let's look at adding components to an interface form in NetBeans Design View. So now that we've built the project and compiled it and tested it, let's use the form designer. So if I go here, here's a cool thing in NetBeans. I can toggle back and forth between the design view and the source view. And what it's going to do is, it, just as if you were creating a project in Notepad, you know how you would you know, declare and then initialize and instantiate your objects. So you'd you know, set up a layout manager and you'd extend J applet or extend J frame if you're inheriting from them. And you'd add your J labels and add your uh, J text areas and your J scroll panes and your J this and J that. Um, you have to declare it and then you'd have to you know, apply a layout manager. Or if you really wanted to get more specific with where you position the components, you'd have to use functions like set location and whatnot. So it takes the headache out of that, because if we were doing that in a simple text editor, then it's going to involve a lot of, uh, you know, changing the code, saving it, recompiling it with Java C, and then reloading it in a, you know, inside of a web page or looking at it in the applet viewer or running the J frame with Java. Um, so this takes the headache out of that, and it, it enables you to design interfaces much faster, much easier. It basically writes the code for you. If you look here. Here's sort of the basic code right now before I've really added any components. But you notice it's set, you know, a layout manager, get content pane, all the things that you would normally type in Notepad for a J applet or, uh, you know, for a J frame application. All right, so there, um, it utilizes init, um, like every J applet and applet does, it has an init method. And inside of init method, it uses its own method, it calls init components. And that's where it sets up all the objects that you design from the graphical designer. So you don't want to modify any of this code. As a matter of fact, you can't. Um, it won't allow you. If I tried to delete that or modify it, it won't let me change it. And that's because it needs that code in this code fold to allow you to use the graphical designer and add components to it. Okay? So you can close that and open it. I usually just leave it closed. So let's go to Design View and look at how easy it is to start adding components. Just like in Visual Studio, there are property sheets for each component, but there are even more features and capabilities that you can set here than with some of the items inside of Visual Studio. So I could, you know, drop a label up here and that's sort of like a C static uh in you know the MFC or Visual Studio, but that's just a J label object. It tells you the type of object. It gives me the properties that I can set on the object. It gives me events. So I can add normally you'd use the keyword implements and implement interfaces in your code, but I can quickly add that just by clicking on events here. It'll add both the interface, the listener, and it'll it will um add an empty event handler function for me. So, you know, for instance, say I was going to implement action listener. You know that when you implement action listener, you have to include action performed because it's abstract. Well, it would add that for me if I chose to, just adding that event there. And then there's code, and here I could control the variable name. Let's say if I wanted to call this um, title, all right, or usually my, the method to my madness is I try to take what everything is. So if it's a J label, I might say JL title for a J label or just L title if it's a label whatever but you can control the access modifiers if I wanted to be able to affect that outside the class from other classes without having to instantiate or build an instance of the class first and use the dot operator then I could make it public and static and that's the equivalent of typing public and static but I just clicked on it with the mouse so it's really cool it's sort of a you know rapid development tool I can come here I can modify the font you know, make it bold, make it something else. Notice it gives you the preview there. Um, just to go through and look at some of the options here, I can change the horizontal alignment. I'll center it up there. So now it's centered up. And let me change the text here. We'll just call it title. All right. Another thing you can do is choose the layout manager. If you right click, notice you can add events. All of your common interfaces that you implement are here. Um, I can set the layout. Here are some of your common layout managers. My personal preference, I use null layout. I don't like, I like to, you know, set the position manually on my objects. And the other thing I don't like, there's no real, you know, kind of visual studio, you know, you can nudge things around. I can't really do that. But what you can do is I can select an object here and I can man manipulate its X and Y. So remember, X moves this way and increases as it goes from left to right. Y moves this way and increases as it goes from up to down. Okay, so if I wanted to nudge that over a little bit, Let's say I wanted to move it to the left. All right, 100. Let's say I want to move it to the right. There, okay. And we'll move it back. Oops, not that much. 
And if I want to move it down, why? All right, we'll move it down there. Move it back up. All right, so you can do that. There's a lot of properties that you can set, background color, foreground color. Now, some of these things um, seem a little buggy or, you know, they may be deprecated in the API. So sometimes you have to use code to set a background color or do different things, but it does a lot for you. Let's look at adding some other components. I'm going to add a J button, okay? And if I add a J button, again, I can change the variable name. And let's say we're making a game. We'll make that the B start button. All right, so now the variable name is B start for the J button. And I can control the events that are applied to it, action events. Um, we'll set some of the properties real quick. I'll, I'll come right back to that, but let me just set some of the properties. Uh, Tahoma, yeah, that's pretty good. And you can set the background. Let's see, let's make it, we'll change the background color, make it red. And let's change the text and we'll call it start because it's a start button. And let's look at the foreground color and let's see, we made the foreground color white. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can see that. Maybe I should make that bold. All right, so we can we can modify the properties of our button, so to speak. Now I can either go here, excuse me, here with the button selected, or watch this. I can right click and look. A lot of you know most of the common interfaces that you would implement are right here. And you can just add them with the click of a mouse. So think about that for just a moment. To illustrate the advantages that NetBeans can offer over using a simple text editor, let's look at implementing the action listener interface on a J button, the text editor, or old school way. Typically, if I were doing this project in Notepad, I'd come over here and what would I have to do? Or what would it entail? I would have to import the right package. So I'd have to, you know, import swing. So I'd have to do that. I'd have to come down here. I'd have to say implements action listener. All right, and then notice it's going to warn me. I need the event handler function for it. So I'd have to come down here, and then I'd have to type the event handler function because it's abstract, meaning that it has to have it. So let me see. Takes an action event as an argument. All right. And then I'd have to add this. I'd have to import this. And notice, neat thing is it'll add it for me. It can import Java action event. But typically, if you're doing this in Notepad, you just say import Java, and you'd wildcard it. Okay. And then, all right. And then here, let me add action listener. All right. So on action event, or I could just wildcard it and import all the events if I wanted to. I guess if you're doing this in Notepad here, I'll just need need how NetBeans will do that for you. But all right, so I'd have to do I'd have to do this, right? I'd have to do this. I'd have to do my imports. I'd have to come down here. I'd have to type in action performed, and then finally I'd have to come in and actually add action listener to the item that I was, you know, in this case, if I look down here in the wizard generated code, notice it's writing the code for me. So, you know, it, it created the button, you know, B start is the variable name and it used it to build, All right? Here's, here it's actually building the object. And so basically I need to, I would have to add action listener to B start. And let's see, we do that. I like the little highlighting feature too. I can do that right before a knit ends if I want to right here. So let me just do that real quick. B underscore start. And then notice if I hit the dot, um, this pops up. And we want to add action listener down here. Or I just type add action listener. And we can use the this pointer for the object itself. And then if I did that, let's say that, I don't know. J option pane. I'm gonna have to import that, but let me let me grab the arguments for that. All right, we'll 
we'll just have it say hello. All right. We have our swing components here. So. All right. So that's if if we had Notepad, that's the long way home, so to speak. Okay. If I wanted to do this and add a JAP champagne, have it pop up and say hello, triggered on the event when I click the button. And then we're gonna we'll look at using the wizard to achieve that instead. Let me. Oops. Didn't add any code to my main file yet, but let's we'll use the applet viewer here. All right, so here it is, and I click start, and then there's my little J option pane. Okay, so just I'm just trying to illustrate how much time uh, NetBeans can save you, or how convenient it is. So I have to do all that for every single button and every object where I want to implement an an interface like uh, action listener, mouse listener, mouse motion listener, item listener, you know, whatever window listener. I'd have to do all of that, right? Okay, I'm going to undo everything that I did and do it instead with Net, the NetBeans way with the wizard. And I'll show you how easy it is instead of having to worry about all of that manually. It does a lot for you. It's great as far as a you know interface design tool and sort of a you know rapid application development tool in Java. And it's free. Now to finish making our point, let's look at implementing that same action listener interface on a J button, the NetBeans design view way. I undid everything I did, right? There's no interfaces, no imports, no event handler now, nothing nothing being added. So it's right back to where it was where I just added the button. So all that stuff that we just did, now watch what happens if I do it instead with the wizard. All right, so here's the button. I'm going to right click, events, action, action perform, bada bing, bada boom. All right, it comes down here, it adds the code. And then if I want to add a J option pane, And I'll just pass a null. Let me give it a string here. Okay. Same thing. Let's build the project. We'll clean and build the main project. And let's test the applet over here. Awesome, huh? Big time saver. Wonderful time saver. In terms of interface design, this is I love NetBeans as far as just a you know a tool for setting up your J frames and J applets and things and, and whatnot. Let's look at adding some other components um, that I wanted to add. Let's say we're going to add uh, some radio buttons. All right, I could add radio buttons here, and I can adjust the properties here. We can go down and adjust all the properties. Look at the events, change the variable name, change the access modifiers, all that from within property sheets. And as we do that, if you were to come down here and look at the code, it's writing the code for you. It's building, declaring, instantiating the objects and going and modifying the properties on them as you change them in the property sheet. Cool stuff, huh? Like let's say I was going to change the opacity here if I want to. So. All right. So that'll let the background shine, you know, show through there on those radio buttons. And let's say I wanted to add a button group. I don't even have to type. I just drag it on here. And if you look over here in this really awesome pane over here, the navigator pane, or inspector pane now, but navigator when you're in functions, but I can just select it and I can do whatever I want. I can, you know, go here and rename it if I want to. Um, a lot of times I'll prefix it. Let's say I'm going to call it BG Weapons, all right? If I was doing a game, so that's the button group for weapons. And then these could be weapons here. And then it's easy to add these to the button group now. So if I were to come here, I'm going to call this. Um, RB for radio button weapon one. I'll call this uh, RB weapon two. Let me go here and modify the text property accordingly as well. Weapon two, weapon one. I'll drag these two down here. And then if I wanted to add them to a button group, watch this, I can select both of them. And in the form designer, yeah, normally I'd be typing code, but I can actually choose the button group right here now, BG Weapons, and I put them in a button group. So if I were to build the project, let me go here, run it. And there they are, they're in a button group, so I can only select one at a time. Like true radio buttons. Had I not done that, I'd be able to select both. If, and if I wanted to do that, I could do that. Some people like to do that. But normally, radio buttons, you put them in a button group, you only select one at a time. Okay, I could add a text field. 
for in this case, you know, input, if I wanted to take input and process it in some way, I could add in addition to the JText field, I could also add a JText area. If I wanted a larger open spaces. Now when I do that, check this out, it's cool. Normally it's a multi-step process. You know, you you add a text area and then you create a scroll pane and you set up the scroll pane with the text area to control the vertical and horizontal scroll bars. Look at that. And that means did it all for me. And it even associated and set up the object such that it, you know, it's controlled by the right scroll pane. And if you rename it, here's the accessible parent. If I were to rename this, it automatically renames everything. It's just like doing find and replace. If, if I were to rename any of these, wherever I use it in the code, if, if I used it a thousand times in my code and I decided to rename the variable, it would take care of renaming every single variable for me. It refactors everything. Oh man, I love NetBeans. NetBeans is the best thing since sliced bread, if you ask me. But, and it's free. My gosh, some of the best things in life are free, and I'm not getting paid to say this. Um, so anyway, a couple of items here, and let's just say we wanted to to you know do some code here. I'm going to modify the instance or, or variable name here. Let's call this the uh, text field. We'll call it TF input. Okay, and let's come over here and we'll call this TA output. All right. Okay. All right. Let's see. We wanted to change the modifiers, and I could go in the code and type public and static. Well, actually, I can't. That means won't let me. But it's cool. I can do this. Public and static. That's the same thing as typing, you know, changes to the modifiers if I want to. Public and static, so to speak. All right. So have those items. Let's say I want to base an event based on this button here. Okay. And we'll just recycle it. Let's call it the enter button. Da da da. And we'll refactor it. Let's say I want to refactor it. Watch this. Boom. Every place in the code, that button would now, you know, that change would be reflected in, in the code. So I'm going to put that there. And we'll, we'll drag it over here, I guess. That, maybe that looks more aesthetically pleasing. I don't know. All right. So now if I go into the code, I can go find my event handler. And let's say instead of a J option pane, I want to, you know, get something from that object there. So let me go over here and. I'll add a little bit of space between our open and closing braces there. So I'm going to take TF input, right? And I'm going to call get text. Uh, sometimes autocomplete's not the best thing since sliced bread, but. All right. And I'm just going to say, let's see, we'll make a string here. Let's make a string. We'll just call it message. Why not? String message equals and get that. We'll get some text. We'll store it in message, and then let's say we're gonna take this. We'll do ta output, which was our text area, and. It even inserted message for me. I was trying to get the autocomplete to pop up, and but it, it even figured, okay, well, I'm local to this function. He's got a string up here. I'll just insert that string, and you know, it's it's amazing that the autocomplete, the IntelliSense, it's just pretty cool features here, built in the NetBeans. I'm not trying to pimp it out. Well, I guess I am pimping it out, but my gosh, it's free, guys. Come on, it's free. It doesn't. It's a great IDE for programming. It doesn't cost you a dime. It doesn't cost you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It's free. All right, so if I were to build this, all right, and I'm going to come here and I'm going to type in banana. Bananas are yum. All right, and so it just takes the text, copies it to the string message, and displays it in the text here. Look how easy that was. So it's it's a nice tool. I mean, truth be told, I could have done the same thing in Notepad, and for a long time we have. We've been doing projects in Notepad and in the console. And this is a great design tool. You could do the same thing with JFrames. If I wanted to add a JFrame, I you know, for instance, I'll come over here. Let me go over here in the default package. I'm going to make new, and I'm going to choose a JFrame form. That's the graphical part. And again, if if you don't if you haven't used it, if this is, you just installed NetBeans, you might not see them here. Then simply click on other down here, and you'll you know go to Swing GUI Forms, and behold, 
there's all those objects there. Either way, but you know, new J frame. Let's say I'm going to call this uh, frame two. All right. If if the J applet was frame one or window one, then we'll call this frame two or whatever you wanted to call it. Same thing. Here's the J frame object, and I can begin adding objects to it. Um, I can set the layout on it. I'll just throw some objects on here real quick. Uh, let's see, text area, list box, uh, combo box. There's some items on there. Build the project or rebuild the project. And I don't have any code in main yet to instantiate or build these forms. So if I, it's tempting to just click here and run it, but until I put code here to do that, I can't really look. I can't really do anything with that. It's not going to do anything other than just run the empty main function. But again, I, we can use the built-in applet viewer to right-click and run and individually test each interface. I can do this. If I want to, I'll launch that J-frame. Let me pull this down here. There. I have to use set size and probably set the dimension. But there's the J-frame right there and running inside of applet viewer. All right. So we're going to look at some different projects that were built in NetBeans just using this interface designer. Quick quick, simple, easy game projects that you can do to help you learn Swing Components and, and the graphical design tool.